So my name is Sin Ru. Uh, on the schedule, my colleague Bezel was supposed to talk, but uh, he couldn't make it today. So I thought I would still take the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about protein design and what we do at uh, the Institute for Protein Design. Uh, I'm a postdoc at the Baker Group, and I will focus on uh, talking about design protein binders of uh, targets of interest. So here, I'm showing some of uh, the Vials for insulin. So insulin, as a lot of us know, that is uh, a drug that people use to treat diabetes type 1 and type 2. It was actually the first prescribed protein that produced uh, in uh, E. coli, in uh, recombinant uh, protein production methods. So, and I will use this as an example why we want to design proteins that bind certain target receptors. So uh, there are many people with uh, diabetes in the US and globally too. And actually, uh, before pandemic, there was about 6% of population worldwide has diabetes. And there are two types of diabetes. The type 1 diabetes, that are the people, the body doesn't make sufficient uh, insulin. So the patients would absolutely need to take insulin through their life. And then, there are type 2 diabetes. So in this case, there's insufficient insulin produced or the body is really insensitive to the insulin produced. And the, uh, the patients would often like need to take insulin as well. And for all the people who have the insulin uh, need, only half of them from certain countries have the access to get insulin. And we're pretty much all aware that there's a really high cost of insulin uh, in many countries, especially with low and uh, medium income countries. So we want to uh, make, to see why uh, this is the case. So the, here is a diagram of how uh, more than insulin are produced. As you can see here, it's a very long process from um, recombinant DNA plasmid to the, till the final product. And because of the high cost, there's actually a program called Open Insulin. I'm not sure if any of you have heard about. People are actually trying to make, trying to come up with a protocol that they can make insulins at home. And this is not something that easily you can DIY at home. So how do we solve this problem? So uh, there are, we want to fully mimic the function of insulin and possibly come up something better. And also for the current version of insulins that they are highly engineered from the native insulin, but with different type that's based on the, um, the onset time, the peak time, and the duration of the, of the, the effect of the insulin. And uh, we want to do this with our design proteins as well. So can we design something better to substitute insulin? Uh, there are small, some features that we really like. First is little sequence similarity to native insulins. Why do we want that? Because of uh, native insulins are heavily patented, and that was one reason that it has a really high cost, uh, that because it's just uh, not publicly accessible. So by having little sequence similarity using de novo uh, protein design, that we don't have that issue. And then the uh, other benefits that we want to have would be have easy manufacturing and low cost, and also we can engineer all the features we would like to control the time of the onset, how long and how fast that uh, uh, the molecules that we produce can take action. So uh, the methods that I used to design insulin substitutes are uh, based on the paper published here uh, in, in this year in Nature by these two leading investigators, Long Xin Cao and uh, Brian. So as shown in the figure, basically, uh, so we have a target of interest, and then on the surface of the target, we generate a lot of inverse rotomers that can use uh, that can use our small uh, protein library to dock to find the perfect docks on the surface that will be shaped complementary to the target, and then we can do sequence design to identify the pro to the proteins that can bind to the target, and this is purely computational. And after the first round, we can do a second second round by extracting the best motif out of the first round of the design and then doing a motif grafting 
with the small protein library we have. And using this way, typically with the target, we'll have uh, between thousands and ten thousands of designs that we can use uh, high throughput is display to screen. Okay, so uh, I think, uh, not sure how many of you are familiar with the high throughput screen with its display. So basically the way we do it is we order oligos on, uh, with large library and then the protein wall, the binder that we designed will display it on the surface of the yeast. And then we do a few rounds of selection to check the expression of the protein and also in presence of the target. So the one have a binding signal and also expression will be enriched, grow, and then will further uh, screen to find tighter binders. So for insulin receptor, uh, here's some uh, data I had that uh, we were able to have binders that can target insulin at certain concentration. So this is just a graph at 100 nanomolar, but uh, it's actually bent a little bit tighter. So uh, once we identified the protein, we can do purification of the protein and also check uh, the affinity using different techniques. So here is a graph with BLI. Okay, uh, so because a lot of my work are still on ongoing and have not been published, so I'm going to use some of the examples that we have published in the past couple of years, which is a COVID example. So uh, Longxin and Brian, they have this uh, binder that targets uh, SARS-CoV-2, and then uh, as shown in this cryo figure, you can see the binder we have is really small and they have really high affinity and actually neutralize virus in vitro. And uh, using this binder, it can be turned into a sensor. So using our co-locker system, using our locker system, that it can sense the presence of the virus and turn into a detection tool. And these mini binders, they have the advantages that you can link multiple of them together and then the, to increase the potency. So they're very adjustable that you can put it in different formats. So if you have a ligamer, for, a, a ligamer scaffolds or you, have, or you can use flexible linker to link different copies of it and you can bring a binder to one car target to another target. Okay. Uh, so for some of the future work that, uh, and also ongoing work, is for lots of binders I have, so we need to do experimental characterization, and then that will lead to uh, further optimization in the protein design and engineering step. And uh, so basically a lot of experimental characterization that need to be done, and also check the functions in cells. So a lot of just uh, feedback between experimental work and the design work. And also with uh, a lot of computational uh, methods improvement we have in the past uh, year, six months with deep learning methods. So uh, I'm also designing new, new binders for insulin receptor. Some of the challenge we have in general for binder design for targets is we have various success rates highly depend on the target. So we cannot say we can design binders for every target of interest. And the other thing is, uh, because the success rate, as I said, currently we're at maybe one out of 3,000 binders that we have one uh, success hit. So uh, the experimental limitation really slow us down. It's more the bottleneck uh, compared to the computational design. And the other thing is, uh, so I mentioned the insulin receptor as one example of the binder design project. So I have many more projects like this happening at the IPD and, uh, and as uh, researchers at academic labs, so you know, we are not capable of really pushing it to actual applications that can benefit the general public health. So we are always seeking uh, funding opportunities to turn some of the research products that's into uh, startup companies as well. So uh, with that, I will just uh, acknowledge the people from my lab. Uh, and here I'm showing the collaborator I have on the insulin receptor project and also the major developers of the method. And of course, my advisor, David Baker. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'll take questions. Hi, thank you so much, great talk. Um, so I know that uh, uh, currently all the insulins available uh, in the market, you need to do injections. 
-hmm. And so I think one dream is to have overly bioavailable insulin. Uh, do you have any thoughts on how uh, protein engineering or Rosetta can achieve that? Yes. So uh, we have other compared not to for minibander in general, we have done some kind of work for injection, so in, in, in vivo test that's uh, not not necessarily clinical level, but definitely for uh, mice work to show the half time of the molecules, and that is engineerable. So I think if we don't do any modification, it's like maybe 15 minutes circulating in the body, but uh, with some engineering, we can increase the time of the mini the, the mini banders circulating the body, so they can be injected. And the other thing is insulin has inhaled version as well, and also for the mini binder, so we have some work uh, ongoing in the at the IPD about inhaled mini binder as a drug therapy. Could you say something about the immune response to these? Yes. Uh, so surprisingly, with all the work we have compared to antibodies, it actually has fairly low immunogenicity uh, based on you know very preliminary data we have for other binders, but these mini proteins were not very immunogenic compared to antibodies. So I know that from your work with LCB1, you know that the it's a pretty stable protein. Do you know what happens to these insulin mimetics um, after they've bound the insulin receptor? Are they then degraded or what, what happens to them? So. We don't have those data yet. My hypothesis would be it will work like native insulin, how it activates insulin receptor, which will get internal, will activate the pathway, get internalized, and then degrade it. So that's how native insulin works, and that's kind of what we expect with our, uh, our uh, insulin mimics. One possibility is we can engineer it to make it keeps on, which I'm not sure if we really want that, 